To have you better understand how functions work, we're going to take a look at what we call the runtime stack and the whole concept of reference parameters versus value parameters. Okay, first of all, what do we mean by a stack? A stack is a, a uh, data storage mechanism uh, that you probably have some familiarity with. If you've ever been into a diner, you go to the end of the end of the line where there's this cabinet that they put plates on. The plates sit on this uh, spring-loaded device, and you're only able to access the very last item on that stack of plates. Well, that is a stack, and the runtime stack works just like that. You can only see what's on top. The compiler can only see the function that's on top. So we're going to go through some demonstration with the runtime stack so that you understand how the compiler, better idea about how the compiler works. Let's visualize the runtime stack as just that, something that we're going to put plates onto. Uh, those are going to be functions. So here's a program with a main function and an auxiliary function called average. All right. When we start the program, the plate that goes into the stack is main. As you can see, it's labeled main. We have three variables, num1, num2, and the average. They come into existence when they're declared, and in this case, they're initialized. They have the initial values of 4, 6, and 4. Now, when I get to the function call for average, what happens is we push another plate onto the stack. Another function goes onto the stack, and the compiler can only see the variables at the top. Now, the variables num1, num2, and the average are invisible. The only thing that exists is what is on that top plate. Okay, so what comes into existence? Val1, val2 and av. They all are in existence, as you can see. The values for val1 and val2 have been transferred from the function call num1, it was 4, num2, its value is 6, and those are copied up to here. So you see these values were copied. And remember, it's the values, not the variables themselves but the values, okay? Average, it comes into existence, and it's assigned the value of val1 plus val2 over to, or in this case, 5. We hit the return. What does that mean? That means that that value 5 is copied down here to the calling function. It comes back down here and replaces this function call, okay? Now, when we return from that function, go back to this line of code, that plate is gone. That function's been popped off of the stack. You can no longer see those variables. They don't exist. If I were to refer to val1 and val2 down here in main, the compiler would come back and say, well, those are undeclared variables. We hit the return zero here, and as soon as we exit main, that function also goes. That it plate is, is gone. Okay, that should give you some uh, perspective on how everything works with pass by, remember I said this earlier, pass by value parameters. Okay, let's take a look at another function, swap val. All right, if you take a look at this swap val, we pass two values to it, two ints, say, we create inside the function a temporary int that we assign val1 to. We uh, assign val2 to val1. We assign temp to val2, and we return. So ostensibly, this is going to swap the values. Well, does it really do that? If you go through the exercise with the runtime stack and pushing the functions onto that stack, you'll see actually what happens is absolutely nothing. It does nothing. Come down here to main. We declare a and b uh, to be of type int with values 7 and 2. Output them. What do you get? You get 7, you get 2. Now, pass them the swap val. So, 
this is 7, this is 2, this is 7, so this is 7, this is 2, so this is now 2, this was 7, this is now 7. Okay, at this point right here, VAL1 is what? It's 2, VAL2 is 7, so it appears they swapped values, correct? But when we get back down here to main, what has happened? Well, remember this, this function here is popped off the stack. All those variables, temp, val1, and val2, are gone. And when we output a and b, we get 7 and 2. Nothing has changed, OK? Because what was happening in that function was not reflected back in the calling function. What we want is that the changes made in the function are reflected back in the calling function, in this case, main. So let's look at another version of swap. OK, this is swap ref. The only difference here is what? It's that ampersand. What this does is it makes val1 and val2 what we call reference parameters. When you have a reference parameter, that means that its value back in the calling function can change. What you're doing is you're setting up a reference to the arguments that are passed into those parameters. So val1 and val2 are references. val1 is a reference for a in main. Another way of looking at it is it's an alias for the argument sent, in this case, the variable a. OK? So whatever happens to val1 in this function, that's going to happen to a back in the calling function in main. OK, again, you can think of a and b now, not their values, but the variables themselves being sent to these parameters. And they get swapped in the function, and that means they're going to get swapped down here, and the values are 2 and 7 when we output them at the end. So let's take a look at the runtime stack with another function here. Let's look at get point. All right. And again, two floats. They are reference parameters. And I'm going to pass A and B. Now, in this case, the point of this get point function, no pun intended, is to send, it's sort of like sending empty buckets to the function. A and B have no meaningful values before I call the function. When I call the function, I'm sending empty buckets, so to speak, up here to uh, the get point function. And you're going to prompt and read in these values, uh, x and y, uh, upon execution of the function, so that when I return, because they are reference variables, the values of a and b are now meaningful. So here, a and b are meaningful. They have meaningful values. OK, so let's see how it works. OK, when we start the program, main goes on to the stack. A and B, they don't have any meaningful values. I'm going to call the function get point, And X and Y come into existence. They are aliases for A and B. So I prompt for and read in X. So the value of 5 okay, is read in in this function, but remember, whatever happens to x happens to a. x is just simply another name for a. Prompt for and read in y, so I now have a meaningful y value. And when I hit the return, x and y are gone, but a and b remain, and their values have changed. And that's how reference parameters work. So now you have pass by reference as opposed to pass by value. It's pass by reference versus pass by value.